In this session, we're going to go over how to do a simple, uh, simple regression, simple linear regression. So, the reminder of our least square solutions. Reminder: if you well, if you don't remember from high school, and potentially you repress the memory of it. What we're trying to get is the predicted y, labeled y prime, or sometimes this is um, y hat as well. All it is is the predicted y variable. And so we're going to have the slope times x plus um, the y-intercept. How do we figure it? So a reminder, the slope is just determines how much y will change when x is increased by one point. And then a is just the y-intercept. That determines the value of y when, when x equals 0. And sometimes this is theoretical. There's times where x can equal 0. If it's an SAT score, um, and that was your x, um, there's, you can't even score a 0 on the SAT. So, so at times that can be theoretical. Here's our formula, the sum of products for the, for the slope, sum of products divided by the sum of squares for x. And then here, this y bar is just the mean for y. Um, here's our slope, and here's the mean for x. So we're going to multiply the slope times the mean for x and subtract it from the mean for y. And what we're going to use is the, the data that we went through for calculating correlation. Uh, so, so as we go through this for calculating the b, from that, if you remember, this was our data that we worked through in that problem. And so, um, so our, our sum of products, we calculated to be 127, and our sum of squares for x was 98. So 127 is our sum of products divided by 98. And so our slope. one point three zero. Okay. Next is the we'll be calculating the y intercept. So we need the mean of y and the mean of x for each of these. So the mean of y one fifty three, right? That's a, we sum up all the y scores we get one fifty three divided by our sample size which was nine. The mean of y is seventeen. The mean of x, 63, divided by 9, 7. And then our slope we just calculated to be 1.3. 7 times 1.3 gives us 9.1. Minus 9.1, 7.9. Okay, so now we have our we have our slope, um, which tells us how much y will change when x is increased by one point. So when we increase x by one point, the y changes to 1.3, and then we have the y-intercept. So when x is zero, y will be 7.9. All right. So we, we've got each of those for our least square solution. And um, so the next thing I want us to do is let's go through and, and plot out our data into a scatter plot. So this is how we would create a scatter plot. Here we have our x variable down here. x variable is the seven minute screen. And then we have our y variable here, that, cog that full cognitive series test. So you'll notice our x, this is our x, this is our y. You'll notice these scores go from basically 3 to 14. So as we put these out, we could go by 2s would probably may, make the most sense. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. And then here is our y's. Um, goes up to 25. So maybe for maybe for this 5 10 15 20 and 25 okay so now we're going to plot, plot out our data here so our first score um, is for a first person they have a 3 here and they have 11 for a score in the cognitive series test so, so we plotted out that first person. 
Next person is 8 and 19. So they're roughly about roughly about right there. And 10 and 22. 8 and 20. 4 and 14. 7 and 13. 4 and 9, 5 and 20, and 14 and 25. There's our data. We see that we do have a pos it looks like a positive correlation as we look as we look at the, the data here. Um, we certainly have some variability that, that exists here um, as well. And so now what we could do is to, to plot out our um, simple regression line here for this as well. So as we do that, we're going to use our least square solution to plot that out. One way to do it, uh, actually a quite simple way to just go about and do this, is um, we've got our least square solution here. We're going to plug in our numbers for this, and what we want to do is get a couple different predicted y's based off of this. So, and honestly, I'm just plugging in a low number and I'm plugging in a high number uh, to, put, to put into this. So for this formula, first one, y prime equals, here's our slope of 1.3 times, and then I'm going to take a low number. Let's just take one. It's nice and easy to work with. Plus 7.9, our slope. So we've got 1.3 plus 7.9. We've got 9.2. Okay, our predicted y, when x is 1, our predicted y is 9.2. So I go here, I look at a 1 and 9.2, and I put my little x right there for that. Now I'm going to maybe take a little larger number this time on the other end of the spectrum. And what's easy to, to work with, a 10 would be easy to work with. Notice how I always give myself easy numbers to work with. Um, plus 7.9. So we've got 10.3 plus 7.9. We've got 18.2. So when x is 10, we pre the predicted y is 18.2. predicted y is, is 18.2, roughly right there. And what we can do here is just take a straight edge to con connect those two. And that's our regression line for this. And from that regression line we can start making, we'll start making predictions from that regression line. And uh, also with, with any of these, is if we know that, let's say, if we know that Harold score, he scored, um, he scored an 11 on the, um, he scored 11 on the seven minute series. If we, we just plug that into the equation, if we want to get his predicted Y score from that, times 11 plus 7.9, We have 14.3 plus 7.9, 22.2. So if Harold scored an 11 on the cognitive, the seven-minute cognitive screen, we'd expect his total cognitive series score to be 22.2.